Good afternoon, it's Valerie Holdren and um, wasn't planning to make soap today. Today is New Year's Day, um, but I needed to restock my um, indigo soap. I, I think I called it the blues the last time and um, one of my customers says that she really, really loves that when it's her favorite. And the last time I did this, I think it was called Indigo and Corn Flower, something like that. Um, everybody was asking me because they love the swirl on it. I don't know that I can repeat the swirl. That's just something that sometimes happens accidentally for me. But they were curious as to how I did the Indigo. And so I'm going to try and repeat that today uh, for those who asked me to. And um, I got a little sidetracked, and my oils got much hotter than I like. So I have my crock pot to off. I'm even considering taking it out of the heating unit just because they're so hot. They're at 212. But anyway, I, I, I'm going to go ahead and see what happens. Um, I'm also going to be using some beautiful Tussa silk that was gifted to me by a fellow soaper who isn't soaping much anymore. Her name is Karen Boyce, and she's um, a member of the Hot Process Soap Making Group. And I do thank you, Karen. It's wonderful. I won't have to buy silk for a long, long time, and I really, really appreciate your thoughtfulness in sending it to me, your generosity for the gift. And um, so I'm going to be using that today. It's already dissolved in my lye solution, and this is 38% lye liquid that I'm using today. So I'm going to go ahead and get started mixing things up. In my oils, I have my colloidal oatmeal and my kale and clay. And in my water, like I said, I have um, a fair amount of Tussa silk, probably a 50 cent piece, and this is a two pound batch. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour my um, lye liquid into my very hot oils. And I do expect some separation because this is the same recipe that I used the other day with 35% lard, as I, I mean 30% lard, excuse me. As I said, I wasn't planning to do a video, but I wanted to mention Karen, and um, if she watches, she can see that I'm using her sweet gift. And I wanted, several had asked me when I did the indigo soap again to please video it, so. And today's not a real good day emotionally because it's another first. It's our first start of a new year without Gracie. And that just doesn't seem possible. So, soaping makes me happy, so I'm going to start. Probably going to take a little while to trace. It usually does when I use a higher percentage of lard. And I like to bring mine to, at least to a medium trace. You can fast forward through this part if you don't want to watch. And 
and I don't think you can see how clearly silky this is. Um, it has a really pretty sheen to it. And that's from the Tussa Silk. I'm in a thin trace, but like I said, I like to go to at least a medium. And the other day when I used this, the natural batter was so white, I didn't have to add anything. Um, I just used my colorants that I wanted the contrast, but the, this will probably be just as white as it was the other day. And that's due to the recipe, I'm sure, with the uh, lard, the cocoa butter, canola, castor, coconut oil, and olive oil. And I do expect some separation. I usually do get it um, with the high temperature and the lard. So I'm going to stop right there because I think that's thick enough. It's a little more than a thin, maybe just about a medium trace in my opinion. We all have our different views on things, and that's okay. But I am going to keep my stick blender out because when I get a lot of separation, even though I use my whisk, my arm gets so tired when it won't go back. Um, when I can't get it back together quickly. So um, I'll probably end up using the stick blender again if I can't get it to cooperate. Okay. And now we wait for it to start cooking. I just realized I forgot to add two ounces of my milk so I was glad I remembered that before it got too far um, so I ran over to the stove and got it and I'm just stick blending it again to make sure it's all incorporated different about this milk is I always add some type of milk um, but Valerie Mosher and I had a, a nice phone conversation yesterday and we were talking about using yogurt milk or yogurt as our milk and I have done that before and so I thought well you know what I'm going to do that again today so in this in my with my coconut milk I added two ounces of coconut milk and two ounces of yogurt, plain yogurt, and mixed it together, whisked it together. So that's what I just added in here was the blend of coconut milk and yogurt. 
and then after the cook I'm going to be adding the other two ounces and I'm still going to add two tablespoons of yogurt by itself like I always do so I knew there was something different I just can't think of everything <laughs> and I am getting quite a bit of separation already so it's not going to take long and I'm going to have to stick blend it again I'm sure so stay tuned okay it's starting to cook really well and it's also separating a great deal so I'm going to go ahead and whisk it together can get it back together this way. If not, then I'll use the stick blender again. This is a stainless whisk. It's not aluminum, so there shouldn't be any reaction. Um, someone asked me that one day because my formula had been turning like a green color after it reached Vaseline. And it's like immediately once it reached Vaseline, it would get this translucent green color to it. And I still have not been able to figure out what caused that, but I don't use aluminum. I always use stainless or plastic, so I don't think that was it, because I use this whisk all the time. And I am gonna go ahead and stick blend that just a little bit and see if I can get it back together. And I'm just giving it little pulses. Probably going to get a decent volcano if I'm not careful. Also noticed if I soak at really hot temperatures, I get a lot of separation. coming up to volcano so it's gonna keep whisking I mean stirring it down and I'm also gonna go ahead and remove it from the cooking unit because it is so warm Excuse me while I reach. And 
it's between a Vaseline and a mashed potato, and it has a really pretty sheen to it. And I'm sure that's a big part of the beautiful Tussa silk that Karen gifted me. I just feel so honored when fellow soap makers think that you could use something and want to gift it to you. It, it tells me that they have a respect for you and I do so appreciate it. And almost all Vaseline now. Okay. Scrape down my sides. And I'm going to give it a little spray with this hot water mist keep my sides clean and the top from getting crusty and I do see it's trying to go it's changing color on me huh. I don't get it I really don't but it has that green hue again Alright, well I'm going to let that sit for a few minutes and um, I just want you to see that green. It's got to be the temperature. I, I just can't, I can't pinpoint anything else. So I'm going to cover it up. I'm going to go over to the stove and get my super fat and a few of the other additives. and. Um, let this batter cool enough to do a zap test and I'll be back. Okay, no zap, but that is such an ugly green. So in goes my 2% extra super fat of apricot kernel oil and hopefully this will do what it did several times before and as it cools down, it'll go back to a pretty light color. I, I guess it, it, maybe it is the heat. I, I don't know. It's frustrating. Okay, now I'm going to add in my room temperature yogurt, and that's one tablespoon per pound of soap, so it's two tablespoons of yogurt. I'll mix it in really, really well. what I get for getting sidetracked and letting my oils get so hot. I probably should have waited. But people do hot process. I mean, high temperature hot press all the time. So, I don't know. It 
sure not what I'm hoping for with indigo. Okay, and now I'm going to add my um, yogurt and coconut milk mixture. And it's hot. didn't I was counting on the really natural white color that I got from this formula the other day so that I would be a pretty contrast with my indigo without having to add any mica but if it doesn't get lighter I'm gonna have to use some white satin looks like curdled milk. That's better. It's at 165. So perhaps it is the heat. Okay, now I'm going to go get, I forgot my sugar water. Be right back. Okay, and here is my one tablespoon of sugar, two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, and one tablespoon of sodium lactate. And they are all wonderful ingredients for the skin and lather, they make a wonderful lather. There may be hope. <laughs> Gonna spray down my sides. And this water is it's actually hot. And I'm gonna cover this back up and go and get my cups and my mold. And I'll show you how I did with the indigo. Okay. I have about a half a teaspoon, maybe a little more, of indigo powder. And I mixed it with just a little bit of glycerin and 
I don't know, maybe a little more than a tablespoon of hot water. Takes a while to dissolve this. And it still doesn't seem completely dissolved, so I'm going to run it through this little sieve. I have my hot cups with water that have been sitting. Um, so I'm going to add a little more than half of it. Whoops, I forgot to strain it. to help get any clumps out. Because I want a variation in the color. So that'll be the lightest. And I don't want to do this because it's not hot, but you know what? I don't want those clumps from that other cup. And then the other, I'm going to put the biggest majority in the larger cup. And I'm just running it through this sieve. what I'm going to do is I have my essential oils that are hot. I'm going to add a little bit to each cup in the main batter. And my essential oils are juniper berry, tea tree, peppermint, um, rosemary, And lemon and the lady loves this blend she said that it reminds her of her grandmother okay now I'm gonna get my spoon I can actually just pour it because it's pourable enough I want the majority white, so I'm only doing about a cup of batter in each one. And this one will be my darkest blue because I added more. I don't know how this is going to work because this is the other indigo that I used was Ann George. And I bought a, a, a Ann George cake by mistake, so meaning I have to chisel it off. So I thought, you know, I don't want to do that every time. So Nurture Soap had the powder. So I ordered that, and that's the first time using it. So we're going to see what the colors, if there's a whole lot of difference. But I think I'm going to like them. There is a contrast. Okay. I apologize. I think you have a big enough space to work, but... Going to pour in a little of the natural. And 
then a little of my darkest. And I think I'm going to try a, from high up. bit of the lighter. And a little more of the natural. I'm going to save a little bit of the, the two for the top. And then a little bit more of the natural, I mean of the lighter. I'll save that for the top. And then I'm going to finish it off with the natural. This smells delicious. And I apologize for being in the way. going to save what's left in there for my sample bar. Okay, now I'm going to attempt the hanger swirl. It's not my favorite hanger, but, and I'm going to go down and over and then back up in like figure eights. At least that's what I think they're going to be. And then I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing. I do not know what I'm going to get. I'm always surprised. Not always pleasantly, but I'm always surprised. And then I'm not overly good with tops, but I'm going to do something. Just do some little curly cues, maybe. And that's going to be it for me. So we'll see what happens. And um, I'll see you in a while. Hey, good evening. It's uh, been about three hours and I just unmolded my soap and thankfully it did go back to its natural pretty white color 
Um, I was a little worried about that, but thank goodness it did. So we're going to go ahead and do the cut. I'm not sure what this design is going to be like, but it is what it is. Can't change it now. So I'm going to go ahead and cut an end off. side and hope we get something pretty that is kind of pretty you can see the it's a little darker I do think I'll use a little more of the indigo next time. That's pretty. Isn't that pretty? It's not exactly the swirl I had before. but it's definitely interesting. Smells really nice. As I said, <laughs> I never know what I'm going to get. about two or three more here to cut. It's pretty soft. Very nice. You see little tiny veins running through there. Okay, well, that is how I do my indigo. And um, I hope you have a, a great night.